Okay, dividing polynomials. Way back in grade nine, you added and subtracted polynomials. You just took groups of things together. It's called collecting like terms. Then we did multiplying polynomials. We've done a fair amount of that in grade 10 where you distributed and collected x squareds and so on. You didn't get too crazy with the degree. Okay, I'm gonna start using that word now a little more. Degree, it's a handy word. It just means the highest exponent we see. And in grade 10, degree was two. And so you did adding and subtracting and multiplying. Dividing polynomials, you haven't done much with. So let me just talk about that. You may have noticed we have added and subtracted and multiplied polynomials in the past, but we did not do any dividing. This is because dividing polynomials is not nearly as simple as the other operations. It has some problems, and I'm going to show you about them right now. Now, in grade 11, you did do some dividing of polynomials, but it was all rigged up to factor and cancel. It was all in chapter one. You factored the top and bottom, and then you canceled out some things, and you stated some restrictions. And really, I, I just taught this lesson in the grade 11s the other day uh, on one of my coverages, and it really is mysterious what the heck is even going on. Yeah, it's really just a practice in factoring is, is what's going on. This is what they can't do in grade 11 um, that would help them to understand the big picture. This and the stuff we do in chapter 5 will finally complete that whole deal. Do you remember what I'm talking about? You'd get this polynomial and you'd factor it and you'd end up with like 2x plus 1 on the top and x minus 2 or whatever it came out to be and then on the bottom x plus 2 and x minus 2 whatever the situation was, and you stated the restrictions to say, oh, x can't equal negative 2 or positive 2 because we can't divide by 0 for, for some reason. And then you cancel out the top and bottom, and that's what dividing polynomials look like in grade 11. Does this sort of ring a bell? Yeah. We're not going back to this, by the way. This isn't about to re, uh, re uh, put its, its head in, in this lesson. It comes back in Unit 5. So that's what I was talking about here. Factor the numerator and denominator, state the restrictions, and cancel. That was what it would look like. Most times, life is not that easy, though. Why? why it, it all feels rigged up. It's like you just rigged it up so that they, they cancel every single time. Well, is that really how polynomials work out? And the answer is no. It, it rarely works out that they'll cancel nicely like that. And so um, if there's no factors in common, this procedure has to take on a different look. And to be able to handle this new look, We've got to look back a little bit at something you thought was never going to reappear because it, it never seems to reappear. You do long division in like grade 7, I think, and then it's gone. It just mysteriously disappears. Well, it's not because they're like, oh, you don't need it till grade 12 advanced functions. It's, it's quite possible that after grade 7 long division, it never really comes up at all in life, especially in this day and age with calculators. Yeah? but we're gonna need it here. And to see the whole picture, I'm gonna show you, okay, so I got two examples here. I'm gonna do one that's just supposed to ring the bells in your brain a little bit and go, oh, I kinda remember this. And then I'll slow it down for this one and go, let's make sure we understand it step by step. Because we need it, we need it today. We're not gonna be doing these, we're gonna be doing dividing polynomials. So if I use some strange language here, if I use words that you're like, why are you saying the, it like that? You're, you're complicating it. My whole thought is about Polynomials, polynomials. I'm getting ready for the examples I gotta teach you. So if I phrase it weird, stick with me. Here was what the deal was. Three into 195. You look at three into 195 and you can't do all of 195 in your head. So you go after the parts you can. The biggest parts you can. You go after the 19 and you go, okay, well, I, I don't really, I can't really do three and 195 in my head, but I can handle three into 19. So I'll just focus on that for a minute. Then you look for the biggest number that goes into 19. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. However you figure it out, you figure out how to get the most out of this. And the most would be taking six threes out of it. So I write up here, okay, I'm gonna go after six of them. Then I multiply the six and three together to say, okay, I'm taking out 18 and subtract. Remember, I'm not trying to really teach the steps here. I'm just trying to scrape some rust off your brain and go, oh, I kind of remember this now. Then you bring down this five. Some teachers draw a long arrow to bring it down. Some just put a little X under it to bring it down, whichever works for you, yeah? Um, when we go to do it in the later examples, the X might confuse the issue because there'll be other X's there. So I suggest if you saw X before, you start using that arrow to say, and bring the five down. That's usually when people's brain clicks in and goes, oh yeah, bring the five down. Now I do sort of remember this. Then you just do it again. That's, that's, the, that's the whole procedure. See how many times three will go into 15? five times, multiply the three and five, is 15, and subtract to get zero. This one happened to have remainder zero. There's no reason it should have remainder zero. 
I just picked one off the start that had remainder zero. So if you're, I'm going to make this bigger. So if you're like, uh, I barely remember that, then you really want to want to turn it, tune into this one. I'm going to really slow it down to make sure each step is covered. And now's when I might use some funny words to get us ready for the next part. Four into 2065. It's not easy to figure out how many times four goes into 2065. So you pick a part where you can go, oh, but I can figure out how much it can go into this part. And the part I'm going to go after is the 20. And I sort of underline that to go, okay, I'll deal with that, all of it in a minute, but I'm going to just deal with the 20. And then you go, how many times does four go into 20? Well, four goes into 20 a lot of different ways. You can go once or twice or three times. There's lots of different choices, but we want the most. We want to take away as much of this 20 as we can if this procedure is going to work properly. So you count by fours in your head or whatever you do to figure out how many times four goes into 20. Hopefully your multiplication tables are good enough that you go, okay, I know what it is, it's five. Four times five is 20 and you subtract and you get a zero. Then you bring down the next number, in this case, the six. You could bring down more numbers if you wanted. It's your choice how many you bring down, but usually it's one, that you, it's one number that you bring down. Okay, then you go four into six. And I know it says zero, six, but that doesn't really affect anything. The zero is just there as sort of a placeholder to go, look, there's, a, there's nothing here, a zero. So that's why I've got the zero written there. And I'm making a big deal out of it because this comes up in polynomials. That sometimes we just put a zero there to remind ourselves, yes, zero. And zero, six, while it looks weird, is not really all that confusing. Zero, six, got it. Then you go four into six. And again, get the most. Get the most out of this you can. So one, four times one is four and then subtract. So it's always multiply, then subtract, multiply, then subtract that we do to get to manage this. Then go again, you bring down the five. And you go four into 25. And you want the most. I mean, you could write down, you could take out five fours, you could take out four fours, you could take out three fours, there's all sorts of choices, but we want the most possible for this procedure to work properly. So I want six fours and I end up with remainder one. How did I do? The whole job was brush the rust off of that procedure. We're only going to do it like seven more times in this lesson. So if you're like, yeah, I sort of, I, mm, I don't know if I could do one, but I sort of remember what you're talking about, then you're in good shape at this point. But do you have any questions about that procedure right there? It has a name. It's called long division. And we're going to use that name for it um, over the next uh, few uh, lessons. I almost said few days, but it, for us, it's not a few days, it's just a few lessons, right? More time here? Notice that 125 divided by 3 equals 65. That was the first question I did, and I found out that 195 divided by 3, remainder 0, implies that 65 times 3 equals 195. I'm going to totally give away what the big plan is here. When that came out to remainder 0, and this will really help you on the assignment, yeah? There's an aha moment in the assignment, and it's laying right here already. When it comes out to remainder zero, I've factored 195 into 65 and 3. That, that, that's, that's the big deal here. And this one, 2065 divided by 4 equals 516 remainder 1, implies that 4 times 516 doesn't quite make 2065. There's a remainder of 1 there. I didn't factor it. I missed by just a little bit. It doesn't perfectly factor. And I'm using all those words to get you ready for a well, walk. You can see on the board there, the, the big day of factoring we've got tomorrow. It's going to be factoring all morning tomorrow. And, and so I'm starting to lay the foundation for that right, right here now. So we have this, divisor times quotient plus remainder equals dividend. These words are supposed to come up in grade seven, but lots of times teachers just leave those words on the shelf and just show you their procedure and don't worry about it too much because these words don't come up a whole lot, but you're, you're going to need them. You're going to need them. So here's the picture of them, so, you, so it's easy to, to understand this sentence that we got here. The quotient is the answer you find. It goes up here when you're doing these questions. The divisor is what you're dividing by. The remainder is what you get when this is all done. Sometimes back in grade six or seven, you, you wrote it up here when you were all done. They told you to write the remainder up there when you were done. I only mentioned that. We, we won't really do that, or you won't have to do that. But I mentioned it because maybe you're used to seeing the remainder up at the top there. And that leaves this one underneath 
Uh, this is called the dividend. And I'm going to give that, that test went so well that you might be down to being a nitpicky person where you've got to get all the little details, that extra little half mark, that extra little mark that slips through your finger. And so one of the tactics to do that and make, make a difference with those extra little half and one marks is when you're taking these notes is to have these big moments where you highlight stuff and you go right before the test, the night before or at 8 o'clock in the morning or right as you're walking into the test, just scan through those things again and remind yourself about them. This will come up, this sentence, knowing this thing. You can, the picture's not bad to be able to go, oh yeah, divisor times quotient plus remainder is the dividend, but the sentence is very, very powerful. And there's a homework question that's going to rear its head right away and force you to come back to that sentence, okay? So yeah, if you text me tonight and say, Mr. Todd, what about number, I think it's like 11 in the homework thing. I don't even know how to start number 11. All I'm going to do is text you this sentence. It's so powerful, this sentence, okay? And the picture helps to know what's going on. All right. So what, you say? What has this got to do with polynomials? You know, I didn't come here today to learn about long division. I, I certainly could have done that off the Internet. I didn't need you to go over long division with, division with me. No, let me show you what, 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 what's going on here. We got this? You more time here? Going to resize things to make it exactly the size I want on the page here. Here's what we want to be able to do. x squared plus 7x minus 3 divided by x minus 1. Notice that x squared plus 7x minus 3 does not even factor. Let's start working on quadratic factoring right now, shall we? Just in case quadratic factoring is sort of slipped out of your brain. Because we've got to be able to factor quadratics in this chapter. I'll sort of imply like, oh, and then you just do your quadratic factoring. I'm a little worried about it. In, in, with everything that's happened. So I'm going to review it as we go. If you want to factor a quadratic, a degree 2 like this one here, and the coefficient is like a 1, like it's just x squared, factoring back then was actually pretty easy. Well, factoring only got hard after this. You look for two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add to 7. So you make a little list and you go, okay, so uh, what multiplies to negative 3? 1 and negative 3 multiplies to negative 3. Negative 1 and 3 multiplies to negative 3. And then there's really nothing else from a, a whole number, like 2, 3. I've got all the possibilities there. And then you look for the, one, the pair that adds to 7, and there's no pair that adds to 7. This doesn't factor. Okay? So that's what I'm saying here. Notice that x squared plus 7x minus 3 does not factor, so cancellation is not going to happen. So we're left with long division. I'm going to do it really big over here. Must be getting old. That used to be big enough for me. I don't know. Now I, now I want this big version of it. Now I'm going to try and use all the same sentences that I used for long division of numbers and do long division of polynomials. I don't know how to do x plus 1 into this whole thing, so I'm only going to go after part of it. The part of it this time is the part that has the same number of terms that I already have. If you're like, where are you getting that from? Wait, uh, you'll see in just a second why it has to be the same number of terms. So I've got two terms here, x plus 1, so I go after two terms here. Then, I want to write something up here in the quotient. I'm going to try and use those words whenever I can to poke them into your brain. I'm going to write up in the quotient here, I'm going to write something that when I multiply it by x plus 1, I get rid of as much as I can. And as much as I can is the highest degree term. Poking that degree term into your, into your uh, brain as well. I want to get rid of the highest exponent if I can. So. Here's the plan. Maybe you already know what I'm going to write up there. I've got to write something up here that when I multiply it with x, I get x squared so that it'll subtract and disappear. I'm going to say that sentence a million times in the next 25 minutes. So what do you put up here in the quotient that when I multiply it by x, I get x squared? x. Oh, you were looking for something hard. Some people hesitate. They're like, it's got to be hard. No, it's that. Long division is not that hard, not really. You just got to think a little differently than you do with long division with numbers. So I put an x up here. Then take that x and multiply by the x plus 1. Distributing as you go. See, x times x is x squared. And x times 1 is 1x. Do you see how I had to choose two terms? When I do the distribution, I end up with two terms. To make it all line up right, 
I'm going to choose the same number of terms as is what's in the divisor. Yeah, keep throwing the fancy words in here to try and help you along. Well, just to quiz you right now, then after I did that, well, what do you do with these two things? Subtract, okay, so you are remembering what you need out of long division. It's just multiply and subtract with smart selections in the quotient, that's all. So I subtract x squared minus x squared and succeed at what I set out to do, which was get rid of as much as I can. And then 7x subtract 1x is 6x. Okay, more quizzing. Then what? After you have subtracted, bring it down. You see why the little x's might not be the best move now? Because you're gonna, you already got x's in this question. More x's might not be the greatest thing. So the little arrow to say, then bring down the minus 3. If you get that, you're home free along division. Well, okay, there's some details. I gotta tell you, there's some details. I gotta, I'm gonna do a bunch of examples so that you really get it. But that's the whole procedure, basically. You just keep going until you're done. And the rest is, I'll show you some details on it and practice it a bunch of times. Okay, go again. I gotta put something up here in the quotient that when I multiply it by x plus one, I get rid of as much as I can. And as much as I can means the highest degree term. I wanna get rid of the highest degree term available. I wanna get rid of the six x. So I'm going to put up something in the numerator, or sorry, in the quotient, that when I multiply by the divisor, I get 6x. What do you got to put up here? 6. Okay, yeah. I, I can still see the hesitation in people's eyes. They're expecting something really difficult here. And no, not really. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a procedure you have to learn, that's all. So I got to watch out for the distribution, though. 6 times x is 6x. 6 times 1 is 6. And then I subtract. 6x minus 6x, that goes as I wanted it to go. And then negative 3 subtract 6 is negative 9. A weird looking remainder, by the way. Don't be surprised that the remainders are weird looking. You never got negative remainders when you did it with numbers, but you can totally get negative remainders here. The reason is, in the old questions, in the number questions, the remainder always had to be less than the divisor, or you've done something wrong. You shouldn't be getting remainder 7, if you had a four up there, that shouldn't happen. Here, the remainder should be lower degree than the divisor. See, this was x plus one, this doesn't have the x in it anymore. So that's what is less for us now, is a less degree. See how convenient the word degree is, it's, it's handy. Yeah. Uh, two ways to write the answer here. I don't care which way you write the answer. The only reason I'm doing both is to get you ready for weird questions, okay? One way to write the answer is to write it as a division question. Therefore, x squared plus 7x minus 3, minus 3 divided by x plus 1 is, that's what the question asked. It says, what's x squared plus 7x minus 3 divided by x plus 1? And the answer is, uh, I don't want to write is there. I want the actual equals, what answer did I get? It's equal to x plus 6. hesitated, stop for a second, plus a remainder. There was some leftovers that didn't get divided. Important sentence. There's some, a part that didn't get divided. I got this, but I also have a remainder that didn't get divided. The negative nine didn't get divided, so it's still over top of the x plus one. That's the part that didn't get divided. That's a little mysterious why I'm putting it over the x plus one. If you want, x plus six is what I've got left after I take out x plus one, and negative nine never got dealt with, so it's still over top of the original denominator, the original divisor. There's another way to write it. The other way to write it is using this sentence from before. Divisor times quotient plus remainder equals dividend. And I'm going to highlight that sentence again because that thing's gonna come up and haunt you if you just don't get it memorized at some point here. And you just write in the things. You say, okay, so the divisor was x plus one. The other way to write the answer is, therefore x plus one times the quotient x plus six plus the remainder, negative nine. That equals the dividend x squared plus seven x minus three. And the only reason I'm writing them both ways is to get you ready for questions that ask you to go a little farther with all this, okay? If you were just asked to divide right here, let me circle it, 
if you were just asked a division question, and I just said, here, divide these two, and the homework asks you that, all you need is this. That, that's a perfectly good answer. This is all preparing you for other situations. Any questions about that? Yes. This is one of those situations where I don't care which way you answer, I'm preparing you for the idea that this might come up the other way, where you, where you have to understand what this means when you see it. Yeah? Other questions? Yeah, yeah, there's a distribution thing going on here. It's, it's like, it's almost like you're thinking 6 times x plus 1, so you've got to multiply by each one. And so the 6 gets multiplied by each piece over there. Great question. Other questions? More time here? Oh, go again. Yeah? I'm just going to do the whole thing again. There's one little quirk in this question here. So just don't copy, yeah, don't copy anything yet. Something's going to go wrong in this question. It's really, if you got what I just did there and you're like, oh, I think I sort of get that. I'm ready to go practice it. I, I like it. Um, just hang on for a second. There's a little problem that, that, that develops in this one, and we just need a little management technique to handle it. So here we go. Don't, don't, you ready? Don't copy this, because I'm going to have to erase it. I'm going to have to fix it. x minus 2 into x cubed minus 5x plus 9. So what I'm trying to do is go after only two terms. I've got x minus 2 here. With the distribution, it's going to give me two terms back. So I'm going to go after two terms here. I like to underline them, but you don't have to. Then I go, okay, I've got to put something up here in the quotient that when I multiply it by the divisor, I get the biggest degree term. I want to get rid of the biggest degree term. That's what getting rid of the most means. So I've got to put something up in the quotient that when I multiply it by x, I get x cubed. What do you multiply by x to get x cubed? x squared, yeah, okay, so no, no tricks there. When you're coming up with these things up here, it, it shouldn't be like, it shouldn't bend your brain too much. It's really pretty nice, actually. You just choose what it takes to multiply by x to get x cubed. So then I get x cubed minus 2x squared. Draw my line and subtract, and it works. x cubed minus x cubed, gone, that's what I wanted. And then look at this, 5x and 2x squared. It didn't line up right. This is x, this is x squared. And there's lots of ways to survive this. There's lots of ways to handle it actually. I've seen people do all sorts of different things. But the by far easiest, most powerful, best way when this happens is to go, oh, I, I messed up originally when I wrote this thing down. If I want all this stuff to line up nicely, and that's what this is all about, is making these things nicely line up so I can subtract. I'm going to rewind here to a big moment here. Okay? So I'm going to rewind. Undo, 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 do, 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 do. Plus zero, yeah. To make it all line up, I'm going to put that zero in there. And you've got to have this spider sense in the middle of this when you're writing these questions down. It should go like this. You're like, okay, let me just copy down. X minus two, good. X cubed. There's no x squareds. And you literally write that. Plus no x squareds. It's going to mess you up. You're going to swear at this tonight at some point. You're going to be like, oh, X squared. You, know, you forget to put the zero in. It's easy to do. There's a hint there, though. When things don't line up right, when you get X's and X squared, you're like, oh, that's not, that can't be right. And then you go back and you put the zero in. Okay. Minus 5X plus 9. Now you can start copying, and I'm going to do all the same thinking again. X squared up here. Now watch what happens here. This is beautiful. X squared times X is X cubed. X squared times negative 2 is negative 2X squared. So I've just multiplied that X squared times both of the terms in the divisor, subtracting x cubed minus x squared, and look, it lines up. x squareds and x squareds. Isn't that beautiful? Now it makes a lot more sense. So just put those zeros in there when you're missing them. Now, that's a logistical issue. Here's the problem with long division. Negatives are the problem with long division. It's a weakness of, this, of the system. It doesn't come up when you're doing it with uh, numbers but it comes up in this that negatives are going to pop their head and it's going to cause you no end of trouble if you don't rely on your calculator. Your brain's going to be doing all sorts of other stuff. It's going to be like, 
okay, got to put that X up there to devise your quotient, da 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 Keep, put the zeros in. Your brain's busy doing all this stuff, and then you're going to see zero and negative 2X squared, and you're going to write down negative 2X squared. It's just screaming at you. Your brain, my brain's screaming at me after 30 years of doing these. My brain's screaming negative 2X squared. But what operation are we doing here? So it's zero minus negative 2X squared, so it's actually positive 2X squared. And if that is already bending your brain, rely on your calculator here. In the middle of all this, reach in and get your calculator beside you and go, okay, zero minus negative two, remind yourself to put that subtract in every time or it's gonna mess you up. Bring down the next one, negative five X. And here we go again. <coughs> I gotta put something up with the quotient that when I multiply it by the divisor, I get two X squared is my first term so I can get rid of the biggest degree here. What do you put up here on the quotient that when I multiply it by X, I get two X squared. Two X, yeah, not that mysterious. All that lead up, all that explaining by me makes it seem like something really tough is coming. Not really, it's not too bad. And then distribute. Two X times X, two X squared, you're happy because that's gonna go. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. And then you subtract. 2x, say the word subtract as you're doing these. 2x squared, subtract 2x squared, gone. Negative 5x, subtract negative 4x. Hopefully that's enough to motivate you to go, just hold on a second, let me just get my calculator on this. Not that I'm not good at integers, that's not the point. I'm busy with other things here, I'm thinking through a lot of stuff. Let's not mess up on the little integer thing because that's infuriating, right? Negative five, subtract negative four is negative one. It's like negative five plus four. And then what's next? Bring down the nine. What's next? Yeah, yeah, think about what I need to put up here to multiply with x to give a negative 1x, it's a negative 1. Notice how the degrees have dropped along the way. You know it's going well when the degrees in your quotient are dropping off as you go. Or, sorry, the exponents are dropping off as you go. One times, negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. And when I subtract, I get the number 7. When you're doing a homework question like this, and it asks you this question, this is a good answer. Just like that, there's the answer. x squared plus 2x minus 1, remainder 7. Good. Okay, but it comes up from time to time when you really got to understand exactly algebraically what the answer means. And so they, this answer means x cubed minus 5x plus 9 divided by x minus 2 is equal to, oops, don't need a bracket there, x squared plus 2x minus 1. That was the part that did get divided. We did divide and got that answer. The remainder is the part that didn't get, that's what a remainder is. A remainder is the part that never got divided up plus seven over x minus two. If that's confusing why that's still over x minus two, let's just think about a, a, a different question for a second. Let's say I go home tonight and I've got my two little kids and I decide to give them nine dollars. Yeah, and I put out nine loonies. Do you see the problem I've developed already? This is actually, they, they put this problem on Sesame Street sometime. And they go, okay, nine dollars, two kids. Okay, I get one, you get one. I get one, you get one. I get one, you get one. I get one, and they each got four dollars, and there's another dollar left. I'm like, that's the remainder, right? Nine divided by two is four. They each got four dollars. Remainder one. There's this part that didn't get divided up. It's still got to be divided by two. And so this seven has still got to be divided by x minus two. We didn't finish up the division on the remainder. The remainder is the part that never got divided. The other way to write this answer is... Divisor times quotient plus remainder equals dividend. And I did that like that on purpose to try and challenge you that it's handy to be able to just write that like that. There's homework questions where um, that sentence will really, really help you out. Stay focused over here though. Yeah, come back to this later. It's like a, Stay focused on the division. That's what we really, really need for your assignment and for factoring. And this is a side thing that, don't worry, the homework will take care of you. Like, the homework will force you to come back to this and think this through, okay? 
What questions do you have? More time here? Okay, take it for a test drive. Mess it up, do it good, do it bad, I don't know. But write this one down and see how, how you do. Okay, because it's good at this moment to go, where is the mistakes? Now, in the meantime, while you're doing that, I'll be doing it on the board, but very, very slowly. So you'll be able to check your answers each step of the way so you don't do the whole thing wrong. Look up every once in a while and see how you're doing. I'll put the next step up so you can check it before you get too far. Put the next step up so you can check before you get too far into it. Next step, step coming. If somewhere along the way the negatives messed you up, yeah, that's pretty much the game. Again, if the negatives mess you up somewhere along the way, that's why I did this. 
force you in that situation, you really recognize how dangerous the negatives are on this situation. You really got to lean on your calculator here. I'm going to put the answer up and then I'm going to pause for questions. Okay, tell me, what questions do you have? I don't mean that the way it sounds. It sounds like I'm like, oh, so easy, right? No, I don't think it's easy at all. I'm just saying I want to know what to focus on here. Which, which part do you want to talk more about? Sophia. What's that? When there's a degree missing. So you can look right at the start of a question. You go, okay, four, three, two, degree one. Really, degree zero, no X's. You need to have every single term there. Yeah? Why did it why did we need the zero on the previous one? Let's go back to that page there. Cubed, no squares. So you just scan across and see if all the exponents are there. Okay. Other questions here? What's that? The other way is to use that sentence. And I'm gonna challenge you by using I got the sentence in my head. And, uh, so you can see how valuable it is to have the sentence in your head. The sentence says, take the divisor, multiply by the quotient. Plus the remainder equals the dividend. And I'm not showing off. I'm showing off, well, I guess I'm showing off the sentence. I'm not showing off my knowledge of it. Of course I know it 30 years later. But, but the, the, the power of it being able to write this out like this. See, it almost factored. Look at this thing. I almost factored, except the remainder was 114, not 0. If only the remainder was 0. I'm giving away the assignment here. If only the remainder was 0, I would have, ha I would have had a factor here. It would have been factored. And, and I'd have a procedure ready to rock and roll. This is why the assignment is so important. Does that help? So I, I just know that sentence, the one that I highlighted in red twice. I'm just using that to, to write out the other version of the answer. Other questions? Oh, here we go. Th these are big and scary. But let me just go through it with you to show you that actually there's, there's components to this that make life a lot easier because you're dividing by three terms here. Okay, so here's the divisor now. It's got three terms in it. Really scary looking that it's got three terms in it. Except it's not. It'll be all right. It only changes one little thing about the whole thing. And then write out the... Uh, you see what they've done here? See, x, x cubed, 3, x fourth. They put it all in the wrong order. We're not going to want that either. We're going to want it in the exact right order. So here comes the drama. x to the fourth minus 2x cubed long dramatic pause. I got the x to the fourth. I got the x to the cubes. Sorry, the x cubes. How many x squareds is there? None. So write that zero x squared. Does that help? Then I got the x's. And I got the three. It's really important you line these things up now. Now, if the three term thing is bothering you, the only thing that the three term thing changes is that I'm going after three terms now in my dividend. Most of the thinking gets the same. You might even not even notice that there was three terms there, really. You didn't really think about it. You go, okay, I got to put an x squared up here because I got to get rid of that x to the four. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus x squared. You see, it's just an extra bit of distribution. That's all that's really changed when they give you one that you're dividing by three terms. And then it's an extra bit of subtraction. That's all. 
Okay, so don't let three terms intimidate you. It's not really a big problem here. I get negative 4x cubed, and 0 minus 1 is negative 1x squared. Be careful with the subtraction. Subtraction's a big issue here with these. Bring down the 5x, and again, there's three terms here, and that's really intimidating, except it's not really a big problem. It just means one more term you've got to deal with as you do distribution and subtraction. So what do I put up in the quotient next? Yeah, negative? Negative 4x, because then negative 4x times x squared gives me the negative 4x cubed that I'm after. And then negative 8x squared, negative 4x. Make sure I did all that right, yep. And then subtract, oh, the subtract. This subtracting negative thing is, the, is th this actually is a very nice procedure, except for the negatives. The negatives just throw an error into it so many times. Negative 1 subtract negative 8, 7x squared. 5 subtract negative 4 is 9, because it's like 5 plus 4. And now, one more time. What do I multiply x squared by to get 7x squared? It's a 7. So I get 7x squared plus 14x plus 7. And I get negative 5x minus 4. What a strange looking remainder I ended up with. Why is it okay? That's my question for you. Why is this remainder actually okay in the terms of this sentence? Let's, uh, in the terms of this. Let's rewind back to a couple things I said earlier. Back in the original division question, I said the remainder should be less than the divisor, and it was. So one was less than four. And then when we got a weird remainder here of negative nine, I said, okay, well, it's actually okay. We actually want less degree than the divisor when we're doing these type of questions. So the fact that it was a negative nine is not that freaky because it was a lower degree, as long as it was a lower degree. Using all that, why is this remainder okay? It's lower degree than what the divisor was. So if that freaks you out, uh, that's new information. The new information is our remainder should be lower degree in these type of questions. So what I get is, here's the version of the answer that I prefer personally because I think it's more descriptive of what just happened. That dividend divided by that divisor gives an answer of x squared minus 4x plus 7 plus the negative 5x minus 4 still over the divisor that didn't get divided. To me, that's the best description. I don't know if it's the easiest version to write, but it's the best description of what happened. I tried to divide it, I got an answer, and then I got a remainder that didn't get divided. Questions? There. Oh, yeah, I think the pencil hitched on me a little bit there. Or the active board pen there. More time here? Who needs more time? Yeah? I left a blank page here. Do you want another one? Or you're like, no, I sort of got that. I'm ready to practice it. It's good? All right. The subtracting negative thing is a big problem. It's such a big problem that mathematicians have come up with a way to do this procedure without all the writing. And you're probably going to find as you're doing this home, the first few questions of this homework, you're like, 
it's not bad. I don't mind doing it, but my hand's getting sore from all the writing that I have to do. So, synthetic division is a short form to everything we just did. I'm going to do the, a question using synthetic division in just a second. And as I'm doing it, you're going to be like, what are you doing? You're just making up stuff. Don't worry, I'm going to do enough examples that you, you get what I'm doing. And then I'm going to do the exact same question with long division beside it so you can see what the method is doing. Before I start though, let me explain what it does. It takes all the negatives out of it. It takes away all the negative part of it. So you don't have to deal with subtracting the negatives. And the other thing it does is it makes it so you don't have to write x cubed, x squared, x cubed, x squared, x four, x cubed, x squared. You know, you don't have to write all that stuff out. It just goes, oh yeah, I know, this column is x four, this column is x cubed. It just keeps track of all that. And the, uh, fair warning again, the first time I do it, you're going to be like, where are you getting this stuff from? Then when I show the long division, you're like, oh, maybe I sort of see what you did there. And then we'll practice it a bunch of times to make sure you got it down pat. You're going to want synthetic division, by the way. Because when we go to do factoring polynomials tomorrow morning, we're going to have to do a bunch of division in the same question. And if you're trying to do long division every time, it's just going to take forever. Whereas synthetics shorten that down dramatically. Okay? That's the sales pitch and the fair warning. The fair warning is the first time I do it, don't let your brain explode. This will sort of remind you of the quadratic formula. You know, you know the first learn the quadratic formula. The first time the teacher does it, you're like, what are you doing? You're insane. And then you do it a second time, you're like, oh, I sort of see what you're up to there. By the third time, you're like, okay, I got it, I got it. Give me a shot at it, you know? And that, that's what the lesson is. Okay. So don't madly copy just yet until I get this whole, a lot of this page down, okay? Really stick with what's happening. I'm going to choose a magic number here. And this magic number I just get from this binomial that I'm dividing by. I'm dividing by k x, e x minus 2. I'm going to choose this magic number of x equals positive 2. You don't have to write the positive. I did it on purpose to really show. I chose the opposite sign. I've taken the whole question and I flipped it positive, negative, upside down. Why do I care about that? You watch. Watch why is that so, so important. Now I've got this thing I'm dividing by and instead of writing 4x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 7, I'm just going to write down the coefficients instead of keeping track of all that stuff. 4, negative 5, 3, and 7. Those are the four coefficients in this whole thing. Now I don't have to do all that extra writing. Okay? Now, this is the part where your brain explodes until I do the long division over here beside it. The first coefficient, the 4, I just bring it down. I just keep it. Then each time I come up to the next line, I multiply by my magic number, which is 2. 4 times positive 2 is 8. Now, because I reverse the sign of everything, I don't have to subtract. I can add, and now my brain is useful. Right? With subtracting negatives, it's like, I need my calculator. But adding is like, boom, add. And then every time I come up, I multiply in this case, I'm multiplying by 2 every single time. Add, multiply by 2. I can't even resist going fast. The reason I'm going fast is to show you how awesome it is. I just did a whole long division question. You're like, okay, I don't get it at all. Don't panic about that. For now, be impressed by the speed of it and the lack of writing. What did I have to write? I wrote 4, negative 3, negative 5, 3, and, oop, I, hang on, a little fix there. Did you see it when I did it? Negative 7. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Then multiply this by 2. 18. And when I add, I get 11. Okay? Now, to help with your confusion about what I just accomplished there, let me do the same question with long division. And hopefully, for most people, by the time I finish the long division question, I go, I think I see what you're up to here. But show me again a couple of times. Okay. Here it is, long division. x minus 2 into... 4x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 7. If I did this long division, I think I've already done more writing than I did over there. There's the first sales pitch on it. And time-wise, actually, I think if I raced you, no, if I raced me, yeah, doing a whole synthetic division question versus just writing it down for long division, I think I can win. I can do synthetic division the whole question in the time it takes you to copy it, the question down for long division. You're like, okay, I'm just going to do synthetic division all the time then. It doesn't always work. That's its problem. I'll show you what, where it doesn't work in a minute. Okay. Let's go through what happened over here, though. x minus 2 into 4x cubed minus 5x squared. What do I put up here? Oh, 
Yep. Yep. Four, because that's a, a one, so I, I, just, I just need the four again. That's why I just brought this first one down. I knew it was going to be four. I didn't have to write it down. I didn't have to go through all that, but I'm going to write it down here. The next thing is, I go 4x squared times x and got 4x cubed, which is a giant waste of time. I know that that's going to be there, and I know it's going to cancel. See, synthetic skips all that and goes, if you choose the right thing, this first term will be gone. Why are you even worrying about that? Only multiply the 4 by the negative 2. That's all you're really worried about. See how the synthetic division just multiplies by the 2? That's all I really care about is the 4 times the negative 2. And you're like, yeah, see, but that's a negative 8. You're saying positive 8 over here. I'm like, I know. I switched the sign of the whole thing. So I got opposite signs all the way. So instead of having to subtract like I did here and get 3x squared, I could add and get the 3x squared there. It's brilliant. It really is brilliant. But let me go through it all, the whole thing again to see the next part. Then you bring down the 3x. And you go, okay, what do I have to multiply um, this x by to get 3x squared? And it's 3x and I multiply them, I get 3x squared. Of course I get 3x squared. Uh, okay, that, that's exactly what I want. All I really care about is this 3x times the negative 2. So I only multiply by the 2. That's what I was doing here, multiplying by 2 down here. So I get negative 6x. You're like, well, it's opposite signs. I'm like, I know. It's perfect. It's opposite signs all the way through. So I don't have to subtract every time. I can just add. 3 plus 6 is 9. Here I have to go 3 minus negative 6. Okay, 3 minus negative 6, that's like 3 plus 6, 3 plus 6 is 9, and you're fighting your brain the whole time, and the synthetic division goes, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Add, add, add. It's beautiful. Bring down one more, which you don't have to do over here. You don't have to bring stuff down. You don't have to do any of that stuff. It, it, it's taking care of it all for me. And then I go, okay, what number do I need here? I need a 9. 9 times x is 9x. What a waste of time that is to write 9 times x because I knew that was going to cancel anyways. What I really care about is the, the 9 times the 2. So every time I'm worried about multiplying by that 2, and I get 9 times negative 2, I get negative 18. It's the opposite sign, and that's good, because in synthetic, because I've changed the signs, I can use adding instead of subtracting. Right at the start of the question, I go, no, no, not negative, positive, but I'll add. Okay, does that make you happy? I won't do subtracting the whole time. I'll do adding, but with the opposite sign. It'll work out perfect. And when I do this one, okay, over here, negative 7 plus 18 is 11. Yeah, over here, negative 7, subtract negative 18. is like negative 7 plus 18. Oh, that's 11. You see all the work that has to go in there. Okay, two kinds of people at that point. People are like, I still don't get it, man. It's okay, I'm going to do a bunch more examples. Don't worry about, don't worry about that if you still don't get it. Um, they're like, well, why don't we just do this? Why are you even teaching us this? This only works for degree 1 divisors. That's the only time it can be used. It's for degree one divisors. You cannot do synthetic division to do even one, a question like that. So you're still going to need long division when this is over. So you're gonna, you, you still need both weapons. You need to be able to go, okay, what question is this? Okay, this one, long division. Oh, no, I can use synthetic division on this one. You'll need both. You've got to have both ready to rock and roll. Uh, I'm going to pause for questions here, but there's some questions maybe I won't answer. If it's just about practice... You, you won't believe how much practice you're going to get with synthetic division over the next couple of days, you know? So if it's just about practice, just let me go ahead. If it's about what is going on here, or do you think I'm cheating or something's up, then I'll gladly answer those questions. Though. What, what, you, what questions do you have at this point? Andrew. I'm with you. Here's the basic logistical issue. Uh, synthetic ignores one of the terms. And it only keeps track of one term. It only keeps track of this term every single time. So as soon as you've got three terms, ignoring one term is a bit of a problem because you've got to keep track of that other term. And synthetic can't keep track of all of that. The reason we can get away with ignoring one of the terms is we know that term's going to cancel anyway. So synthetic goes, if you're going to ignore it anyways, can I just focus on this term here then? The negative 8, so synthetic all the way through is just focusing on this all the way through the question. If there's an extra term there, you, you, can't, you, you can't handle three terms because you're keeping one and ignoring two and you need, you need one of them. Yeah? But anyways, here is the process. Here's how we do synthetic division. So you're like, 
I don't remember the steps for synthetic vision. You will, you will. Uh, nobody ever comes back to this thing because after you practice about 11 of them, you're like, okay, I got it. I know what to do with for synthetic. But here it is, and you have to look back at it. We first concerned what is what's called the K value. It will be the multiplier in the procedure. Here the value is, K, is two. I just used a two since we are dividing by X minus two. By using two instead of negative two, we can add through the whole question instead of subtract because we've reversed the sign of everything. So your recipe, decide on a K value. List the coefficients in the dividend. Ooh, here, add one thing to that, please. Watch for zeros. Bring down the first coefficient, multiply and add to get the rest, and write out the answer using variable powers. That's what I didn't do in the previous example that I'd like to go back and do. Take a look here. Take a look at this answer and take a look at what I got for long division and can you see how to translate the answer back and forth? It's laying right there. What's the answer? 4x squared plus 3x plus 9, remainder 11. This last number is always going to be the remainder. More assignment hints coming right now. It's too bad it was remainder 11. If it had been remainder 0, this thing would have been factored. Yeah, but it worked out to remainder 11, not remainder 0. Yeah. Do you need more time copying this? Yeah. More time here? More time? No? All right, let's practice it. Here's the procedure, synthetic only. And hopefully you'll see the advantages speed-wise. And second, hopefully, the second time through, you're like, oh, I sort of can follow it now. I'm dividing by x minus 3, so what's the magic k value? What's my magic k value? Positive 3 this time. You don't have to write positive 3. I'm only writing positive 3 to show, see, I changed that from negative to positive. Now, through the whole question, I don't have to subtract. I can add because I've reversed the signs of everything. Then I write out my coefficients, not with x4, the x cubed. I don't, I don't keep track of all that. I, here's, the, here's the x4 term, 5. Here's the x cubed term, 9. Here's the x squared term, negative 2. Here's the What's the next number I should write? Zero. There's no x terms. You're like, oh, that's going to be a problem. I'm going to miss that. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to go through the whole question. You're going to check the answer in the back. And you're like, why isn't this working out? I do, I'm doing it perfectly. Watch out for those zeros. Plus zero x's. To make everything line up, the, this is all about columns and getting it all lined up right. To get it all right, lined up right, you got to get all those things in there. The first coefficient, you just bring it down. 5 is in the question, 5 will be in the answer. And then each time I go up back above the line, I multiply by the magic number. The magic number is 3. 5 times 3 is 15. Now what do I do with the 9 and the 15? Big moment. Add now. Yeah? In long division, it was subtract, but because I reversed all the signs, now I can add. It's taking everything in me not to go faster here to show off how awesome synthetic is. I could be done this 11 times by now. Yeah? Because it's just multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add. So multiply by 3 every time and add. Come back up, multiply by 3 and add. Come back up, multiply by 3. 
and add. I, I, I did my best to go slow, but I can't resist showing off how fast this goes. And just the amount of writing. How many times did I have to write x fourth, x cubed, x squared, x three, x squared? How many times did I have to write all that stuff out using regular division? Therefore, the answer five x fourth plus nine x cubed minus two x squared plus one over x minus three equals. Who'd like to take a shot at it? Okay, why is it cubed? Yeah, it, it, the first one doesn't matter. It's, it, it's, it's, it's knocked a degree off of this whole thing by dividing by degree one. If you count backwards, this is remainder, constant, x, x squared, x cubed. It's always going to be that it's dropped a degree off, and then you just start reading them off. 24x squared plus 70x plus 210, and then the 631 didn't get divided, so it's still over x minus 3. What questions do you have about synthetic division? I, and I can hear in my, the tone of my voice like, oh, it's so easy. I'm not acting like it's easy. I want to know what do you want me to focus on here, or do you just need to see another one? Question. Oh, yeah, because I divided off x minus 3, now that I divide it off, and maybe that, well, I didn't draw enough attention to that. Notice in the answers here, when I took x squared and divided it by x plus 1, the final answer um, was degree one now. It had knocked a degree off it when I divided it. When I took x cubed and divided by x, the answer was now x squared. So it always takes this degree out of it. So that's one way to know the answer. Same here. x fourth divided by x, I got x cubed. So it, was all, it knocked a degree out of it. Same here. x cubed divided by x, I got an x squared in the answer. Always dropping one degree. So that's one way to answer your question. The other way to answer the question is just to read back. We know this is the remainder. So this is the constant term, 231. Oh, sorry, 210. This is the x term, 70. That's the x squared term, 24x squared. And I only get up to x cubed in those numbers. One of them has, been, has dropped off and is missing now. Okay. Great question. Other questions? Very slowly. Now I'm only talking to people who are like, I don't really follow. I'm, I'm not getting all the steps here. First step, if you look back at that, set of steps I did is to select the k value. What is the k value and how come? Negative 2? Yeah, it's positive 2 here, so I switch to negative 2 as the k value. That'll make it so I don't have to subtract. I can add all the way through. Now you list the coefficients. 4, negative 2, 5, 4, and 2. This saves us a whole bunch of writing just by lining those up and writing the individual coefficients like that. 4, negative 2, 5, 4, 2. Good. The first coefficient doesn't change. It'll be the, the coefficient in the question will be the same as the coefficient in the answer. So I just bring it down. Now what do you do as each time you come back up here? Multiply by negative 2. And most people when they're doing these don't even write the arrow that I just wrote there. They don't, they don't write the negative 2 in there every time. They'll do it like this. I'm going to do it fast and then slow, okay? So if you people are sort of getting this, Here's the fast version of it. I multiply by negative 2 every time. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Add is negative 10. Times negative 2 is 20. Add is 25. There's a negative 50. Add is negative 46. 92, 94. Wham, 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 wham. Yeah? If the numbers get too big for you, maybe you need your calculator for a second. I get all that. I'm going to slow that back down again, though, because this example was for people who are having trouble with it, not for people who are sailing along. If you're sailing along, you've already checked out, you're drifted off to sleep, and you're like, yeah, yeah, I got it. See you later. If you're having trouble with it, every time we're going to multiply by negative 2, and then we're going to add what we have there. Then multiply by negative 2. Then add what we have there. Then multiply by negative 2. Add what we have there. Multiply by negative 2. Add what we have there. 
answer. You can write it right up with the question there. I've been rewriting it every time, but once you get going on these, you don't have to rewrite it every time. You just write the answer up there. Who wants to take a shot at it? What's the first one? 4. 4x four cubed. I've knocked a degree off this thing, right? So 4x cubed minus 10x squared plus 25x minus 46. What's the 94? The remainder. So it didn't get divided, so it's still over an x plus 2. Sometimes in the homework they just write remainder 94, and that's fine. But I, I want to keep framing what that 94 is. It's the part that didn't get divided. It's still over the divisor. What questions do you have? Reminder, synthetic only works when the divisor is degree 1. That's the only way it works because it, it ignores, it, it only keeps one of the terms. If there's more terms than that, it's, it's not going to work out. More time here? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so, synthetic division is not very versatile. It will only do degree one, but it will handle degree one situations where there is a coefficient out there. In the middle of all this, you might have been like, you're, you're being very selective, Mr. Todd. It's always x plus two, or it's always x minus three. What if it's something else degree one that I come up with as a factor? That's where we're going with this, is using this to factor, is, is, is where we're going with all this. And there is a way to handle this situation, and that's by common factoring this thing Hey, con factoring popped up again. Didn't I warn you? I warned you. Con factoring is just going to keep popping up. 3x plus 2 is equal to 3x plus 2 thirds. I've just common factored out the 3. So I could do this question with synthetic division. But I have to do it in two steps. Step 1. Divide by this first. See, 3x plus 2 is made up of a 3 and an x plus 2 thirds, if I've common factored out the 3. So I can s do this question first with synthetic 12, 2, 11, 16, k value, negative 2 thirds. What an awful k value. So I'm going to first divide by x plus 2 thirds. I'm going to forget about the 3. So I bring down the 12. Multiply by negative 2 thirds. Ooh, yikes. 12 times negative 2 thirds is negative 24 thirds. Oh, it's negative 8. A lot of this homework's like that. When fractions appear, you're like, oh, fractions. And then it turns out, oh, it's not too fractiony actually. They've, they've rigged it up to avoid the fractions. Then I add to get negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 2 thirds. Negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12 thirds. Oh, that's 4. Instantly, you got your calculator there, though. If you, you know, if that's, if that's too much for you. But I'm trying to introduce the idea that fractions are hard, but some aren't too bad. You know, and these aren't, these aren't too bad here. I add 15. Uh, negative 2 thirds times 15 is uh, negative 2 times 15 is negative 30. Divided by 3 is negative 10. And add. So here's my answer. 12x squared minus 6x plus 15 plus 6 over x plus two-thirds. And I'm going to act like I'm done, but I'm not. There. I divided that polynomial by x plus two-thirds. What did I forget? Also divide by the three, which is easy to do. Divide this whole thing by three. Now I divide by three. Four x squared minus two x plus five 
And now this six is over the original three x plus two because I got to divide it by the three as well. You could write three bracket x plus two thirds as well. Yeah, that's, that's either one of those choices works. Now listen, that question's got some torque to it. And I wouldn't take a run at those until you've practiced enough of the other ones. You're like, okay, I can long divide. I can synthetically divide anything you want. And then you go, now, let's take a look at that number three example that Mr. Todd put up there at the end and see if I can land that thing down. Because until you practice these, some of what I did there, might, it might have been a little too fast. Yeah? I want you to finish copying because I want you to give you the big picture of what has to happen next. Anyone need more time copying? Because I want your full attention so you understand what has to happen next. To be able to do the lesson factoring polynomials part two, to be able to understand it and follow it, you have to have completed most of the assignment. If there's the odd question there, like I didn't know what you meant by this, I couldn't finish this off, I want to clarify with this, that's no problem, but you should be able to get through most of it and at least understand the idea. You'll know what I mean when you get to it. There'll be this moment where you go, oh, I, I get where you're going with this. Yeah? And once you get where I'm going with it, then you're ready for this next lesson. Okay? So you have to do most of this. So a due date, I'm not really worried about the due date here. I'm just asking you, please, get a start on this thing tonight. Okay? Um, next, to be able to do the factoring polynomials assignment, you've got to be able to divide pretty well. There's some, there's some tough questions in this homework. If you can do the ones I've done in the examples, though, basic, fact, basic dividing and basic synthetic you'll be able to do the assignment. So weird job tonight. Get enough dividing done that you can do some of this, then go back after you've got that done. You want to really be ready for tomorrow morning. Now, in your notes, it's not called assignment, it's called investigation. Can you flip to it now so you know what you're looking at? It says investigation, uh, no, exploration, investigating factors of polynomial functions. It goes questions one, two, three, four, then one, two, three, then one, two, three, four, five, six. You're like, holy. That's a lot of questions. No, no, it, it goes pretty fast, let me tell you. If you can divide, you'll, you'll zip through this assignment reasonably quickly. You don't have to have it complete. What you've got to do is go, uh, I get it. I, I, get, I get where you're going with this so that you can understand the next lesson. I saw a hand in all that. Where was the hand? I, I, I kept going to... Do the Wednesday homework up into tough questions. Then move on to the assignment and get enough done that you're like, okay, I get the point, so that you're ready for Thursday morning's lesson. Okay? So really, if you're caught up, up to the end of 3.04, I don't know, is that funny? I can't tell if that's funny anymore. The way that test went, maybe you are in, 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 in that shape where it's like, oh, I got some things to finish off, but yeah, I basically got 3.1 to 3.4 homework done. Then tonight, all you're doing is enough dividing polynomials that you can do the assignment, <laughs> you guys are shaking your head and laughing. That's funny. Uh, don't worry. I gotta, I'm here for you. Right? By lunch tomorrow, it's decision time. We'll go, where are we at? Uh, you know, let's be honest. Where are we at? And then we'll decide how we're going to handle the rest. Okay? Um, keeping this all in the video for anybody who's watching it. This, this is Claude. But, all right. And so that's your goal. So even if you have 3.1 to 3.4 homework to do, don't do it first. Yeah? I, I'm not saying ignore it. We'll get back to it. For now, 3.5 homework, so you go, I got the basics down. And there's a couple of questions there that are like, wow, where did you get that question from? But I, ca I can do the basic questions. Then enough of the assignment that you go, I got the point, I'm with you. And it actually doesn't take long. By the end of, uh, you do one to four on the first page. Yeah, really, by the end of one to four on the first page, you'll be like, I get where you're going with this, I think. You can do, and, and do more, of course, because you want those assignment marks. Assignment marks are, are juice marks in a math course like this. You, know, you, know, you can really make sure it's all, all beautiful and perfect. Is the whole picture reasonably clear then?